Hello my friends. Australia is one of the countries most famous for large scale grazing. On this continent, we can see herds of cattle or sheep, which number in the several hundreds roaming the vast grazing lands. In the process of grazing large herds, the rotation of hundreds of cattle from one location to another is an important factor to regenerate and maintain the growth of pastures. To maintain stability in large herds and always keep them together. In addition to the skill of shepherds or farmers, we cannot fail to mention the contribution of herding dogs. Currently, the most popular dog breeds used by Australian ranchers for farm work include Border Collies, Kelpies and Australian Cattle Dogs. In particular, the Australian Cattle Dog or Blue Heeler is the most famous working dog breed in Australia. It is often bred to support work at most cattle farms in the country. Two other working breeds, Kelpies and Border Collies, are often bred to assist with work on sheep farms. A report in 2021 says there are more than 273,000 herding dogs in Australia, and they are considered an icon in the continent's agriculture. This is an Australian cattle dog and its six day old puppies. At this stage, most puppies are white and their coat color will change as they grow older. On average, each blue heeler dog usually gives birth to about six puppies per year and the puppies will breastfeed for four to five weeks before moving on to be fed with other foods. At about five to six weeks of age, the colors of Australian cattle dogs will change and the blue dogs are usually the most popular. This is also the reason why the name Blue Healer is more commonly known than Red Healer when talking about this intelligent working dog breed. According to a report from the National Kennel Council of Australia, each year in this country, around 6,500 to 7,000 Blue Healer puppies are newly registered. In fact, the number of Blue Healer puppies born each year in Australia may be nearly 47% more than reported. As a breed bred to work on farms, a job that requires a lot of physical activity, the Australian Cattle Dog is a very energetic breed. From an early age, Blue Healer Dogs need stimulation to keep their spirits up which makes them able to continuously play, run and exercise every day. Without adequate mental exercise and stimulation, this working breed will become bored and their behaviours can be more difficult to control. An Australian cattle dog usually only sleeps about 7 to 8 hours a day, instead of the usual 10 to 13 hours of other breeds. In order for these dogs to be able to work effectively on livestock farms, the diets used for them also needs to contain higher levels of fat and protein than those intended for other breeds. In recent years, Queensland and New South Wales have always been the states with the largest number of working dogs raised in Australia. These are also two states with large farmer communities and a high demand for this breed. To be a good herder, Blue Heeler dogs are usually trained when they reach 8 to 10 weeks old. At this stage, these working dogs will be taken to livestock areas, where they will get used to the job by imitating the actions of adult dogs. 
In addition, trainers will train these dogs in a variety of other skills, such as concentration, communication skills, loyalty, and obedience. Skilled Australian cattle dogs often participate in agility trials or field trials organized by working dog associations or clubs. To be selected to work on cattle farms, an adult Australian cattle dog needs to master such skills as serious work ethic, high endurance, good communication skills, and the ability to dodge the kicks of livestock. In addition to hundreds of thousands of Blue Heeler dogs, the Border Collie is also a working dog that is preferred by many cattle ranchers in Australia to use in the breeding process. Today, thousands of Border Collies are commonly kept on cattle farms in Victoria, and this working breed is often trained to work on smaller livestock farms. Unlike the Blue Heeler breed, Border Collie dogs often have less endurance and are not suitable for traveling long distances. However, the intelligence level of Border Collie dogs is more appreciated than that of Australian cattle dogs. Border Collies are often trained to move herds of livestock over short distances from one location to another. In addition, they can also be raised on poultry farms to manage the daily activities of the flock. It is estimated that there are currently nearly 57,000 Border Collie dogs living in Australia, and more than half of these dogs are raised in Victoria. They are not only raised in farms, but this breed is also raised by dog sports enthusiasts or families who keep dogs as companions. This is a sheep farm near the town of Daniloquin in south central New South Wales. Here, a working breed called Kelpie was raised to help farmers herd sheep. It is estimated that there are about 45,000 Kelpie dogs being raised in Australia, and about 60% of them are raised to work on sheep farms. Which working dog breed impressed you the most? If you are a working dog owner, please let us know how you feel about your dog in the comments section of this video. Hello my friends. Today we are going to organic farms in the United States to see how the production of organic agricultural products happens. According to USDA statistics, by the end of 2022, in the United States, there are 17,445 operating organic farms with an area of 5.8 million acres. The majority of organic farms are concentrated in states such as California, Wisconsin, New York, or Pennsylvania. Due to rapid increase in human demand for organic food, the number of organic farms in the United States has always increased by 3 to 5% each year. However, the percentage of organic farms in the country has never exceeded 1%. According to statistics, in 2022, sales from certified organic farms in the United States amount to $9.93 billion, of which the organic products that bring the highest revenue are lettuce, milk, eggs, apples, and cattle. We are currently at an organic lettuce farm in Monterey County, south of San Francisco, California. 
September through November is usually the busiest time for lettuce growing in California's fields. And this 47 acre farm is no exception. Every time the lettuce growing process takes place, this farm will have about 170 migrant workers come to work and most of them are illegal immigrants from Mexico. To receive USDA organic certification, this lettuce farm must meet strict product standards that include soil health requirements, natural pest control methods, and absolutely zero use of pesticides. After about 125 days, millions of organic lettuce plants on this farm are ready to be harvested. This is also when about 270 migrant workers from Mexico come here to work. According to USDA statistics in 2022, California lettuce production is 4.4 billion pounds and about 9.7% of that is organic lettuce. Each year, the lettuce industry in the United States creates approximately 87,300 full and part-time jobs. In addition, lettuce production generates about $2.7 billion in value, of which organic lettuce farms across the country bring in a value of about $830 million. Goodbye Lettuce Farms, we're going to organic goat farms in Edwards County, Southwest Texas, to see how dozens of both goats are raised. In order to be recognized as an organic farm by the USDA, dozens of goats on this farm have been fed organic food for their entire lives. In the production of goat foods such as alfalfa or cereals, farmers are not allowed to use pesticides and chemical fertilizers. In addition, the living conditions of goats on an organic farm should also be ensured by factors such as sanitation of the barn, humane treatment during rearing, and plenty of time outdoors. With outstanding features such as muscular muscles and a stocky appearance, Boa goats or South African goats are often raised on goat farms for meat. In addition, the average weight of an adult boa goat is also 25 to 40 percent larger than other common goat breeds. According to a US Day report from June 2021, there are 14,130 active goat farms in Texas. Of these, there are about 173 certified organic goat farms, and the number of organic goats in the state is about 13,700. Here's what's going on at an incubator in Alabama. One day after hatching, hundreds of geese here will be moved to organic goose farms in Coleman County, located in the north central part of Alabama. These geese will live in the barn for two weeks before they are released outside to roam freely on the lawns. According to statistics from the beginning of 2023, in Alabama, there are 73 active goose farms and most of these are small-scale farms. In order to receive certification as organic from the United States Department of Agriculture, it is similar to organic goat farms. Goose farms also need to meet stringent requirements regarding the use of goose feed, humane treatment practices, and flocks of geese having plenty of outdoor access time. 
At this goose farm, wheat is the main feed used. In addition, geese are birds that love to eat greens and grass, so releasing them on lawns is a must for organic goose farms. According to USDA statistics, in 2021, in the United States, there are about 1,320 geese farms for the purpose of eggs and meat. In addition, across the country, there are also many farms raising geese in small numbers as part of a diversified livestock operation. According to reports from the goose meat processing facilities, Approximately 7,600 geese are slaughtered in the United States each year. 23% of those are geese raised on organic farms. The amount of goose meat consumed each year in the United States is only about 3% of total poultry production. These are chicks at an incubator in Wisconsin and they're about to be shipped to organic chicken farms in Madison City, South Central Wisconsin. Currently, there are 354 chicken farms in Wisconsin that are USDA certified organic. This ranks fifth in the list of states with the most organic chicken farms. Leading on this list is California with 702 farms. All chicken feed on an organic chicken farm must be certified organic and non-GMO. Farm owners are not allowed to use synthetic substances, growth hormones and antibiotics in the process of raising chickens. In addition, the chickens at this farm must also have access to clean water at all times. Currently many people have confusion about the difference between chickens raised on free-range farms and organic farms. The difference between these two types of farms is in the chicken feed. Although free-range farms also release chickens into the pasture, the supplements for chickens here are often made from genetically modified ingredients. According to statistics in 2021, in the United States, there are 5,102 certified organic chicken farms and the number of chickens on these farms is 19.4 million. This is a very small percentage of the total of 9.1 billion chickens raised in the country. Each year, about 7.1 million organic chickens are slaughtered in the United States. In addition, the number of organic chicken eggs collected across the country is about 747 million, accounting for less than 1% of the country's chicken egg production. In 2021, sales of organic chickens nationwide reached $1.1 billion, and sales of organic chicken eggs reached $849 million.